Bible verse about Jesus' resurrection. For what I received, I passed it on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. That He was buried. That He was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4 The triumphant message of the resurrection is the main theme of today. Join Charles Stanley in preaching on this subject. Charles Stanley is the senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Atlanta. His sermons have profound meaning and his influence has spread worldwide. All the gospel writers gave us great detail about the resurrection of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, you would think that after all of that, that most anybody would believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. In the book of Acts, for example, the book of Acts is the story of those apostles going around proclaiming that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, that he ruled and reigned in heaven. If you read through the epistles in the New Testament, you'll find Jesus as Savior, Lord, and Master, the one we're to follow, to obey, to praise, and to adore, and to love, and to look for his return one of these days. And when you come to the last book of the Bible, the book of the Revelation, you'll find the Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning in heaven, getting ready to subdue his enemies, coming back to take us all home with him. You'll recall that he told his disciples in that 16th chapter of Matthew, one of the first times he began to explain to them about the fact that he was going to have to die, here's what he said to them. From that time Jesus Christ began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. And you'll recall that was so obnoxious to them that Peter rebuked him. And then also in the 17th chapter following the Mount of Transfiguration experience. The scripture says in verse 22, And while they were gathering together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were deeply grieved. So, what you find is all through the Gospels, you find one reference after the other of Jesus telling his disciples, I'm going to have to die, but I'm not going to stay dead, I'm going to rise from the dead. And that is exactly what happened because on that morning when they came to prepare for his body, or to add the spices, they didn't think it was probably done because it was done so quickly, he wasn't there. Now, you would think that anybody who looked at the Word of God would believe that this is what he's teaching us, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. But it was a very difficult thing for even his disciples to believe in the resurrection. In fact, if you will examine the Scriptures, you will discover that nobody really believed it. For example, Jesus tried to tell his disciples several times, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be falsely accused, Pharisees and the Sadducees, and I'm going to suffer many things at their hands, and I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die, but I'm going to rise again. They, they never got that. He said it over and over and over again. They never got it because it was so foreign to them. Because this is a man who said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father, I and the Father are one. My Father could send down legions of angels, and none of that did they get. It just didn't fit their expectation of Jesus, so they didn't believe it. So Jesus was crucified, they saw it, they believed that part, and they went away, saddened, brokenhearted, hopeless, and helpless. Turn to the 15th chapter of John to the most graphic picture that Jesus could possibly have painted for us and painted for his disciples to remind us forever that he is with us and also to tell us and to explain to us the intimate relationship that he has with every single one of his children. You'll recall that he says in this first verse of John 15, I am the true vine, my father is the vine dresser. He's the one who takes care of him. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You are already clean because of the words which I have spoken to you. Now watch verse 4 and 5. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you, that is, bear fruit, unless you abide in me. Watch this, I am the vine, you are the branches, he who is abiding in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. What is he saying? Simply this. Lord Jesus Christ who is the risen Lord, one of the first message. 
The basic bottom line message of the resurrection is this, that Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God is alive, seated at the Father's right hand, making intercession for us, serving as our advocate, preparing heaven for us, and at the same time living on the inside of every single one of those of us who have trusted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We can say in the very beginning, the message of the resurrection is, our Christ is indeed very much alive and eternally alive. And verse 32 is the summation of its interpretation, this Jesus God raised up again to which we are all witnesses. What's at stake in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? What does the resurrection prove? It proves the trustworthiness of the Word of God, the believability of the Word of God, the accuracy of the Word of God, the truthfulness of the Word of God. Turn to Acts 13. This becomes a staple part of apostolic preaching. In the thirteenth chapter of Acts, again, the dominant chord in the apostolic preaching is the resurrection of Christ as the fulfillment of prophecy, as the fulfillment of prophecy. And in chapter 13, we move from Peter preaching on Pentecost to Paul, the preacher, Acts chapter 13 and verse 29. They carried uh, out all that was written concerning Him, concerning the Lord Jesus. They took Him down from the cross and they laid Him in a tomb. Verse 30, but God raised Him from the dead. And for many days He appeared to those who came up with Him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now His witnesses to the people. That would be all the apostles and including 500 people in Galilee who saw Him at one time. And we preach to you the good news, the gospel of the promise made to the fathers. And what is the promise? That God has fulfilled this promise to our children is that He raised up in that He raised up Jesus. The promise of the Old Testament is a risen Messiah. What's the message of the resurrection? Every single one of us who knows Christ as our Savior, we too are going to experience a resurrection. Now, not only that, but heaven is going to be our eternal home. The message of the resurrection is that heaven is our home. Because Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again to receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. Now, if we had time, we could talk a lot of things about what the Bible says about heaven. But you see, the most important thing about heaven is not what the streets are made of and whether they are going to be castles or whether they are going to be something else. That's not even the issue. The issue is this. The issue is that God's there. The throne of God's there. Jesus is there. The issue is that we are going to be there. We are, listen, we are going to be serving Him, worshipping Him, praising Him, living with Him and living with our loved. Listen, all that Almighty God has provided for us. Listen, you and I can believe it because Christ rose from the dead, which validates everything He said. If He had not risen from the dead, we'd say, well, you know, other people have made all kind of promises and we can look in their Bibles and see all of these things, but how do we know? Listen, the fact that He rose from the dead, listen, that's proof. Listen, because that's the final test. That is the ultimate proof that He's the Son of God. The ultimate proof that is divine, the ultimate proof of His promises to be true. And He says that is provided a heaven for us, and that's where every single person whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life is going to spend eternity. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.